Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. Now, on a previous episode, I did a video that was kind of shocking, and that video was about Microsoft officially joining the Linux Foundation, and they're actually a Platinum member. And that was something that I think the whole Linux community was you know, kind of taken back by, you know, but for some people, it was something that was going to happen eventually. And I was one that thought that Microsoft was eventually going to come into the whole Linux community. Now, they also already started doing that in their actual Windows 10 operating system as well. Last year, they parted with Canonical, who is the parent company of Ubuntu Linux, and they made the Ubuntu Bash shell right here available natively to run in Windows 10 under the Windows subsystem for Linux or WSL. So what this means is the Bash shell is running natively without it being a virtual machine or without being a container. So what that means is it can actually run native Linux applications in Ubuntu Bash shell. Now something that came up recently is that not only is Ubuntu Linux available, but also OpenSUSE and Fedora as well, their Bash shell as well. And this happened during the recent Microsoft Build 2017 Developers Conference where they announced this. And the whole announcement was this apps will be available officially on the Windows App Store. Now, I'm not a big fan of the Windows App Store. It's, if you've ever been here, this is a pretty uh, horrible experience. And I tried doing a search for the Ubuntu apps, Fedora, OpenSUSE, or any of these Linux apps, and I couldn't find it. You know, So when you do a search here in their app store, it looks for all of Microsoft.com. So if you know how to find it here, let me know, but uh, I had a hard time. Actually, I couldn't find it at all. So um, this is primarily geared towards developers, as I mentioned a little bit earlier. And by doing this, Microsoft is making even more inroads into the Linux community. Okay, so them joining the Linux Foundation, them partnering up with Canonical, and them also adding Linux support for their Microsoft Azure cloud services is basically a strategic move. Okay, I mean, they're not doing this because they love open source, uh, specifically the Linux community, you know, even though they tout that they are people who also enjoy open source as well, they're doing this primarily for business and strategic reasons. You know, uh, Microsoft, especially under Steve Ballmer's uh, leadership, they openly discuss how Linux is basically a cancer, you know, to technology. And when Bill Gates started uh, Microsoft along with Paul Allen, you know, they pretty much made the whole notion of paying for software uh, and having licenses as something that is what we think of today during our modern uh, software uses, specifically when it comes to proprietary software. Now, as I've always said before, I have nothing wrong with Microsoft Windows or Apple Mac or whatever technology you use. I just love technology, period. It's just my choice is Linux. And whenever I think about Microsoft Windows specifically, I think about all the, it, pretty much the bad experiences that I had on Microsoft Windows. And um, overall, it just left a bad taste in my mouth. You know, not to, not, not to say that there aren't good things. So that's the primary reason why I moved to Linux a long time ago, okay? Now, with all these moves that Microsoft is making, I'm gonna go back to what I think about their strategic reasons. Why are they doing this, you know? And why are they doing so much of it um, here in the past few years? Well, it's just the fact that business-wise, Microsoft knows that Windows Server is no longer what it used to be before Linux came along. You know, before Linux came along, you know, pretty much the main options for people who are running servers is going to be a Unix based server or Microsoft Windows Server. Now, as we all know, Linux pretty much has taken over Microsoft in the whole uh, server category. Okay, um, Unix is still extremely popular. Um, and so I don't think that's going anywhere, but right behind that is Linux. And so Windows being the smart company that it is when it comes to managing their businesses and you know strategically looking at what's going on, instead of trying to you know get back market share in that area, instead they will become, uh, I guess, 
partners in a way with the Linux community. And over time, they will push all their services and exert, I think, more of the Microsoft way of doing things into the Linux community. Okay, so that is my thought. You know, I really think that they are going to be releasing in the future. My thought that I think Microsoft might actually release their own distribution. You know, and as much as, you know, flack, as, as much negativity as Microsoft Windows get, you know, you can't deny the fact that Microsoft as a company, they make billions and billions of dollars. Okay, despite not having pretty much a presence in the mobile market, despite their server share decreasing, uh, over to Linux and despite the fact that you know they're constantly in the news for either you know privacy issues or security related issues Microsoft is a s extremely savvy business okay run by really smart people because despite all of these things they are printing money you know billions and billions of dollars every single year and uh, they are not going anywhere and so in terms of what I think positive wise that this is going to bring well it will allow you know more linux applications to run natively in these shells and so if you are a shop or business that primarily uses windows which is the majority of businesses out there you know you could run you know server based applications natively here okay and um, that's really cool and so it does give people who are running servers and you know they have to switch between either windows servers or they run they want to run linux based applications on their servers they have an option now that makes it easier to do so okay so that is definitely a good thing and also at the same time it actually spreads more of the linux presence and uh the linux community within the windows community as well even though it's primarily for the more developer centric server you know a server based market it's still a good sign you know now the thing that is worrisome is the thing that I always think about when I think about Microsoft is the fact that it's Microsoft okay and even if they're not making money in the future off of Microsoft Windows they're always gonna find a way to make money off of their you know many different services Okay, and much like what Google is doing and what Apple is trying to do as well, they want to become more of a services based company. Okay, it's primarily a software service. And so uh, they just want people to get into their ecosystem. And so by getting, you know, into the Linux community this way, they're able to spread their own Microsoft ecosystem into a place where you would never expect this to happen. You know, and since they are partnering up with other open source companies, you know, specifically with Linux and beyond, they're also um, basically influencing them as well. You know, so there is a lot to be said about, you know, uh, the influence you have when you have a lot of money. <laughs> OK, and so Microsoft has that in spades. And at the same time, you know, a lot of these companies like Canonical or Ubuntu, I don't blame them for partnering up because at the end of the day, they are also a business uh, that needs to think about strategic moves as well for future growth. Okay, so the only thing that I would caution is the fact that just remember that this is Microsoft, okay? Uh, regardless of how you feel about them as a company, you know, you got to also think about them in terms of also their intentions as well specifically coming to the open source community so I myself I, I tend to think of Microsoft as two things you know in one sense I really praise and respect all the work that they've done uh, not only for the business community but also in spreading uh, the you know use of software you know if it wasn't for Windows I don't think a lot of people would even use Linux to this day okay so I would definitely give them respect um, and a lot of appreciation for what they've done in those areas. Now, the other area of this, their actual business practices, specifically with Microsoft Windows or even in the server market, or just so many other markets, you know, they are an extremely aggressive company. Um, and uh, as you've seen before in the past, they will take legal action and they will use some really unscrupulous means, you know, whether it was uh, browsers, you know, when uh, Netscape and Internet Explorer, when they had their battles, uh, whether it's current browsers, Chrome versus Internet Explorer, whether it's the mobile space, it just does not matter. You know, just 
Microsoft Windows has a reputation, both good and bad. And, uh, you know, I guess we got to consider both whenever we're talking about this company. So that is it for this particular episode. Uh, the Bash shells are uh, going to be officially or should be officially available on the Windows App Store. Uh, I am really shocked that that's occurring uh, so quickly in such a short amount of time. And at the same time, you know, um, Linux uh, and Windows together, uh, it's something that is a reality now. And so, you know, whether you think that's good or bad, well, there's nothing we can do about it, you know, except, I guess, support our Linux community as best as possible. And then see where this goes with these new partnerships with Microsoft. So if you had any thoughts on this, uh, be sure to leave it in the comments area below. I'm probably expecting a lot of uh, <laughs> creative ideas on this. And as always, if you did get a lot of value out of these videos, leave a like and subscribe. And if you wanted to support my channel further, you could do that at patreon.com forward slash geek outdoors. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com and I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.